All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about controllers and some of the basic differences between an indoor controller and an outdoor controller. These are some questions that we get quite often, so we're gonna cover them right now. Okay, what I have here is uh, I just decided to, to take uh, two controllers from the same manufacturer so you could see the difference. And we're gonna use Hunter controllers. What I have here is a Hunter X-Core controller that is an outdoor model. So the first thing you can tell about an outdoor model is it is in a, uh, it has an enclosure. Uh, this particular model has a key. Some of the outdoor controllers don't have keys, but generally speaking, they're in an enclosure and they have a, a, a door that opens and closes to make them weather resistant. And um, the next thing you'll notice is that it has a, uh, a plug that can go directly into the wall, or I'm going to point out here on this Eritrol model that the Eritrol model doesn't actually have a plug. It just has the uh, wires coming off the bottom that you can either wire onto a pigtail to plug into the wall, or you can hardwire it directly to your electrical source. Okay, so with that being said, uh, the reason that you can plug it directly into the wall is that the transformer is built into the controller. So both of these models have a uh, 24 volt transformer. So we have a 110 or 120 power coming into the controller and the power that goes out to the valves is only 24 volts. So built into the controller is a transformer. We can't see it on the Hunter controller because it is actually, uh, this is a junction box, but it's actually the transformer is actually inside here, so we can't see it. However, on the Eritrol model, I believe we can see the transformer. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to open this up here. Hopefully you can see this. We'll pop it open. And then there's our transformer. So on the outdoor models, the transformer is located inside the controller, and then the controller is hardwired to the electrical source, or it's plugged in. Uh, to an outdoor receptacle. Okay, and then let me also point out on the indoor model, indoor model does not have an outdoor enclosure. There's no door. Um, it is meant to be placed right on the wall, typically in the garage, sometimes in the basement. And um, the transformer portion that we were just discussing here, this uh, is the portion that plugs into the wall, but you'll notice that this, um, instead of being a small uh, wall plug uh, or lamp cord, sort of, it's a big, it's a big box. And in here is the 120 to 24 volt transformer that we were talking about on the outdoor models that is built right into the controller. So if you don't know what model that you have, um, you're looking for a replacement, take a look at where the transformer is. Is it plugged into the wall or is it built into the controller? Okay, uh, it does seem kind of simple, but one thing you can do with an outdoor controller, if you're not sure, uh, you could just buy an outdoor controller because an outdoor rated controller can also be installed indoors, but you don't want to take an indoor rated controller and install it outside. So that kind of covers some of the differences between an uh, indoor controller versus an outdoor controller. The next thing I want to talk about is the rain sensor and how they get connected and the various components of the rain sensor. So rain sensor is a really simple device. You can think of it like a circuit interrupter. And so when it rains, um, specifically there's some cork discs inside a rain sensor and they swell up and they interrupt a circuit. And when the circuit is interrupted, these zones are no longer allowed to operate. This model that I have here is a Hunter wireless rain sensor. And this is the portion that is the transmitter and is mounted on the gutter. Uh, this is the wireless version. And again, you can mount it on your gutter. Typically, you don't want to mount this in a place that is being covered by an eave or trees because you want it exposed to the open air so that any rain that precipitates can be received by the sensor. And then the portion that gets mounted next to the controller is called the receiver. And this can be mounted indoors or outdoors. It does have a rubber um, cover that sits over the unit. And 
uh, when you first connect it up, you'll look for some status lights to make sure that you have a, a good connection between the transmitter and the receiver. And then when you wire it into your controller, it's really simple. There's two power wires. And depending on the model rain sensor, they may be a different color. Some manufacturers use two red wires. In this case, Hunter uses two yellow wires. And then the other two colors, depending if your controller uses a normally open circuit or a normally closed circuit, most controllers use a normally closed circuit. So you just use the, I believe it's the white and the blue could be the white and the orange. Either way, it's only two of these, and these go into the sensor uh, terminal. So let's take a look here on this Hunter indoor controller. I'm gonna pull off the bottom panel here so we can take a look. And the uh, yellow wires, as I mentioned, will get wired into the 24 volt terminal along with the power wire. And then the sensor wires go right here onto the sensor terminal. So if you can see that there's a place where there's two screws and by default there's a what we call a jumper cable that's in there and that keeps the circuit normally closed so if you were to remove this jumper wire then the controller is going to think you're in a rain sensor hold because the circuit's been interrupted and really that's all the rain sensor is doing is interrupting the circuit so i hope that's helpful um, just a little bit about an indoor controller versus an outdoor controller and some basics on the rain sensor and how to install it. So until next time, happy sprinkling.